What's with all those amendments? Why are there so many of them? What do they do? I actually only know what three of the amendments do. Uh, I'm, I'm British. I've never lived in America before. I know the First Amendment. Because that's the free speech one that they always go on about. We all know the Second Amendment. We all know what that one's all about. And then I know the fifth one because when they're in court cases and things like that, there's always someone that'll be like, I plead the fifth. And it's the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination or something like that. So let's learn what all of the amendments about, because the paint explainer is going to explain it with paints. First Amendment. It protects individuals' rights to express ideas, practice any religion or none, report news, gather in groups for peaceful purposes, and request government changes without fear of retaliation, ensuring a foundation for democracy and personal freedom. It, it doesn't protect you from getting banned on a social media website, though. <laughs> basically guarantees freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition. Your freedom of speech doesn't mean that you can't get punched in the face because someone thought that you're a massive idiot or maybe you're being one of the phobias at that particular moment. It might protect you from the government. Like Joe Biden can't personally <coughs> your neck when you say something bad about a minority group, but someone else could probably just crack you nice and easy. They're private citizens. They're allowed to do that. Second Amendment. Well, no, they're not okay. They're not allowed to do it. That's definitely still illegal. That's definitely still assault. But it's not the First Amendment that's going to protect you. You can't hold up a sheet of paper and expect it to block the punch of someone that's mad at you. Protects the right to keep and bear arms, allowing individuals to own weapons for personal safety, defense, and recreational use. It supports the concept of self-defense and the collective security of a free state, reflecting historical importance placed on militias and individual rights. Third Amendment. Doesn't the Second Amendment say a well-regulated militia? I, I don't know. It seems to be in a bit skewed. I mean, I could be definitely wrong on this in many situations. There's many situations I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure it said like a well-regulated militia, which <laughs> just everyone running around with like AR-15s or whatever gun they want isn't really well-regulated. The whole, though, I guess the whole point of a well-regulated militia is to be regulated and to have strong regulations that would dictate who can have these firearms. But I can definitely see why in some parts of America, because there's bears, you might want to have a shotgun. I, I could totally understand that. In the UK, it's very hard to get a gun. You can get one. You could get things like shotguns for hunting, and it's very difficult to do, which I personally, from living in the UK and not having to experience a lot of shootings and things like that, I, I believe that is uh, a, a, at least a good way to go about it. Uh, you have to go into like the local police uh, captain's place for an interview, uh, into his office for an interview. You have to have two people back you up and be kind of like your your, your co-signatories. Like, yes, I believe that this person is well enough of mind to own a gun. And then, and then you can get like a shotgun uh, if, if you want to. It's, it's pretty tough. And it means that, you know, there's not a lot, whole lot of shootings going on. And I've seen people make the, the argument that's like, oh, well, there's too many guns, so there's nothing we can do. Oh, well. I guess we should just do nothing instead. <laughs> we should just do nothing. And I've seen people say the solution is actually everyone should have a gun because if everyone should have a gun, then no one has a gun, which I don't know, man. From a non-American standpoint, looking into how they're discussing this kind of thing, it seems insane to me. The things that some people will say seem completely crazy. It's like they live on a different planet and everything that they have grown up learning is just completely opposite to what I grew up learning. It's It feels like the opposite to what I feel like I know. Of course, th there's no guaranteed truths of the world. People just have different experiences and different stories and they get taught different things as they grow up by authority figures in their parents. It's, it's why people believe in some religions. Like you most likely will believe in the religion that your parents do because you're grown up and, and you're told to, that that's the right one. You know, if you grow up in a very Christian household, you're probably not going to be Muslim, right? It wouldn't make much sense. But the whole gun thing is something I feel like will never, never get fixed and it will merely result in more deaths, which is quite sad. Is there a fun amendment? Let's have a fun amendment. amendment prevents the government from forcing citizens to house soldiers in their homes during peacetime without consent. This Oh, this is definitely like a civil war type thing, isn't it? <laughs> this seals this sounds so old. This amendment addresses grievances from colonial times under British rule, emphasizing the importance of privacy and property rights in a free society. Right. Fourth amendment. I can't imagine like the army coming to my house nowadays and being like 
Hey, I want to eat and chill at your house tonight, and we're gonna do it. I just it just seems like such a silly thing. So that's definitely an, uh, an elderly one. Protects individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures, requiring law enforcement to obtain a warrant based on probable cause for such actions. It ensures privacy and security in personal property, reflecting a balance between individual rights and the needs of law enforcement. Don't law enforcement like break down the doors of houses regardless of this? Fifth Amendment provides protections in legal processes. You plead the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination. Including protection against self-incrimination, guarantees go! due process of law, prohibits double punishment for the same charges, and ensures compensation for the taking of private property for public use. It safeguards okay. personal liberties and property rights in court. Sixth Amendment. Nice. In okay, these are the ones where I'm just like, I have no idea what's going on with these. Ensures the right to a fair and speedy trial, the right to know the charges, confront accusers, obtain witnesses in defense, and have legal representation. Wait, is this it? You need it. Wait, don't we all have this? Like, does, don't most countries have this? I'm pretty sure this is like, this is like a common thing. This is just how mo most law processes work. This amendment is fundamental to the justice system, guaranteeing a fair legal process for criminal defendants. Seven. Oh, so they said speedy. I guess that means it can't be artificially dragged out, which it might be in some countries. It would be artificially dragged out and be delayed and delayed so they keep someone in prison. I could see how that would work. Amendment. Guarantees the right to a jury trial in civil cases involving disputes over property or money, preserving the role of juries in the legal system. It reflects the historical importance of jury trials in protecting individual rights against arbitrary government action. Eighth Amendment. I, has anyone, have any of you guys been on a jury before? I've never been on a jury, but I've heard that it's very, very, very boring. Also, if you're on a jury in some situations, you can get threatened, and it's not even your fault, which is very messed up. You get called up for jury duty, and you're like, oh, by the way, this is this is the Trump case. Have fun. <laughs> like, you're just bugging. What are you going to do in that situation? Amendment. Prohibits excessive bail and fines, and cruel and unusual punishment, ensuring that penalties are fair and proportional to the offense. This amendment reflects society's values on humane treatment and justice, preventing the government from imposing overly harsh penalties. Oh. For example, like locking someone up for decades because they sold weed. Because that would be fair and un unfair and unusual, which is why they don't do that. Ninth Amendment states that the enumeration of specific rights in the Constitution does not mean that people do not have other rights that are not listed. This amendment protects unenumerated rights, acknowledging that individuals hold more freedoms than those explicitly mentioned. Oh, like the right to a health service, maybe? We talk all this talk about the right to a gun and the right to be able to say, I don't know, racist things, I guess. But what about the right to health? Tenth. What about the right to food and water? Is that right? I've seen some Americans argue that you have no right to be seen to by a doctor. You have, you have no right to, like, have food and water. It's like, it's not a right. Tenth Amendment clarifies that powers not delegated to the federal government by the Constitution, nor prohibited to the states, are reserved to the states or the people. It emphasizes the principle of federalism by limiting federal power and protecting state sovereignty and individual liberties. Eleven the whole state thing in America is also a bit strange. America functions like 50 countries within a country and very people are very, very passionate about their individual states, even if the differences between those individual states are next to none. It, it kind of feels like a team game a little bit. I mean, I, I live in the UK. I live in England. So obviously there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a tenseness between some of the countries in the UK, like Scotland and England and, and Wales and England and Northern Ireland and England. There's definitely some, there's definitely some tense stuff going on there, but it's funny. Some Americans seem to talk about America like it's their whole world. Like it's everything that matters and there's nothing outside of that, which I think is very limiting and a bit sad. Like people say America is big and yes, it's big, but a lot of the culture is is very very similar. People might say there's a there's a massive difference in culture between like California and Texas, which is true. It is true. But there's so much out there. There's so much out there to explore and do in the world. There's so much change. There's so much new stuff you can see. I know America's big, but you just take a step out maybe once. Most Americans don't have passports, which surprises me. Seventh Amendment limits the ability of individuals to sue states in federal court, protecting states' sovereignty by requiring consent for such lawsuits. It addresses concerns over state immunity and the balance of power between state and federal governments. Yeah, there's a lot of things about the, between the state and, and the, the federal government. Twelfth Amendment. I, I think Americans just really hate the federal government. 
modifies the procedure for electing the president and vice president, ensuring they are elected on separate ballots. This change was made to prevent confusion, promoting a clearer and more effective presidential election process. Oh, I've never voted in America, so I don't know what that's like. Uh, in the UK, we vote for a, a member of parliament, and then whoever's the leader of the party that has the most members of parliament is usually the one that forms the government. And, you know, the leader of that person becomes the, the leader of that party becomes the prime minister, and then they create a government around that. We don't directly elect our head of state. Well, the head of state's technically it's supposed to be the king, but we'll see how long that lasts. So when I go to vote, I just have a list of people that are standing for certain parties and you just tick off whichever one you want. You don't really get to do much apart from that. In fact, that yeah, it's kind of all you do. 13th really. Amendment. Abolishes slavery and involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime, marking well, what? a pivotal change in American society by formally ending the legal inst- Wait, except as punishment? It's, that's been changed, right? Institution of slavery and reflecting the nation's commitment to individual freedom and human rights. So prisons are slave labor. Fourteenth Amendment. Cool. Oh, okay, we're just gonna. Okay, we're just gonna gloss over that. All right, prisons are slave labor. Cool. Grants citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the U.S. Guarantees equal. Wait, born? So if you like, if you went on holiday and you had like an early birth by accident, could you? Do you just have an American child? Oh, cool. Oh, that's what they call like anchor babies and stuff like that, isn't it? protection under the law and extends civil liberties. It played a crucial role in civil rights by defining citizenship and ensuring legal protections for all individuals, including former slaves. 15th Amendment prohibits denying the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Adva Jesus Christ. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we definitely need that one. Well, no, the fact that that is even needed is terrible. Advancing civil rights by ensuring that all men, regardless of race, have the right to vote. Though Men, men, all men, regardless of race. So actual implementation faced significant challenges. Voting rights will be a key issue as we head into an election year. In and it's still an issue to this day. There's still the way that some of the the states, the, the areas within the states are made up that makes it harder for certain minority groups to have a real voice. November, a federal appeals court decision paved the way for a Supreme Court battle over the Voting Rights Act. Whether you saw this story may depend on which way you lean politically, because it is mostly being covered by left and center rates news sources. I know this thanks to Ground News, the sponsor oh, of whoa, today's whoa, whoa, video. Whoa, Ground okay, News was founded cool, by yeah. former NASA engineer Harleen Kaur to nice. make it easier for readers to compare news coverage and think critically about the news they consume. That was such a good transition into a sponsor. I literally never saw that coming. They show you which sources are reporting on a story and where they fall on the political spectrum so that you can make sure you're seeing the full picture. You can go to ground.news slash TPE to check them. Do I really need to see what Breitbart's saying? Out. The... <laughs> hey, you can use this QR code. Like, do, do I need to know what Fox News is saying? Link is in the description. What I love about Ground News is how it bursts your bubble and lets you see different perspectives on the same topics. For example, you can see that this article says that they're killing key remaining parts of the Voting Rights Act, while this other article focuses on predictions about what might happen in the Supreme Court. I'd highly encourage you to subscribe. Go to ground.news slash TPE and you can sign up for less than $1 a month or get 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage subscription, which is Do it now. You can get so much you can learn so much. What I use. Thanks again, Ground News, for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Ground News, for sponsoring that video. 16th Amendment authorizes the federal government to collect income taxes without apportioning it among the states based on population, enabling a key source of revenue for the government and supporting the funding of public services and infrastructure. And so much military, baby. Let's go. We got a spare billy for the military. We got another hundred billy for the milli, Terry. We got to make some more tanks, baby. We need some more Predator missiles and drones. 17th Amendment. By the way, the homeless problem is skyrocketing. But yo, drones, dude, let's fucking go. Establishes the direct election of U.S. senators by the voters of the states, enhancing democratic governance by making senators more accountable to the electorate, reflecting a move towards greater democracy and public participation in government. There's a lot of states, and there's two senators for every state, which means that everyone has their, their equal say, right? Even if it means that your, your, your equal say is kind of like unequal, because if you vote for a senator in a high population state, it means much less than if you vote for a senator in a low population state. And the only thing that really divides those states is lines that were made up 150 years ago that will decide how much power you really have in this democracy. So my question is, why has no other states just eaten Wyoming yet? They only have 500k people or stuff like that. Why does someone not just eat them? Montana only has like a million. 
There's a lot of space there. Why hasn't one of the other states not just consumed them and added their population to their own? I don't understand. It, it seems like it would be so easy. 18th Amendment. Initiates prohibition, making the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol illegal, aiming to improve social conditions, but ultimately what? leading to unintended consequences and the rise of illegal alcohol trade. De aiming to improve social conditions? Okay. Demonstrating the complexities of legislating morality. What? You mean that if I ban something that everybody wants to do, they're gonna do it anyway? No! What? They're gonna make alcohol anyway? That's crazy! 19th Amendment. <laughs> Extends the right to vote to women. Mar okay, well, that was, that was a while. Oh, hold up. Guys, guys, we need to improve social conditions. What should we do first? Give women the vote or ban drinks? It's the, it's gotta be the alcohol. It's gotta be, we cannot give women to, the right to vote yet. That's not gonna improve anything. We have to ban beer. That's gonna solve the problem. Guys, it didn't solve the problem. I guess we'll give the women the Marking vote now. Marking a significant milestone in the fight for gender equality by Damn, it took 19 amendments to make this happen. Recognizing women's suffrage as a fundamental democratic right, reflecting the culmination of a long struggle for women's rights. Literally half of the population of the country. Or, or the world, to be fair. 20th Amendment. Changes the dates for the start of presidential, vice presidential, and congressional terms, and addresses presidential succession, aiming to reduce the period where there's an elected official whose successor has already been elected or will be soon, and ensures a smoother transition of power. 21st Fun. Amendment revokes the 18th Amendment ending pro <laughs> They're like, wait, guys, guys, it didn't work. It didn't work, guys. We, we have to stop this. It's not doing a thing. Okay, we give women the right to vote. All right, fine, fine, fine. They can have their alcohol prohibition back. Prohibition and allowing states to regulate alcohol, acknowledging the failure of prohibition and the need for a more practical approach to alcohol regulation and consumption. It is actually so weird that in separate states, there's like different rules when it comes to alcohol. Like you can only buy drinks in like certain shops and stuff like that. Whereas like in, in the UK, you can just pop down to your local, your local Aldi, your local Asda, your local Tesco's, something like that. And you can, you can just get whatever you want. In some states, you have to drive to a specific place that sells alcohol. And sometimes those places are closed on specific days, which is just like, this is all made up. It's, it's all made up. So like, why are you closed on specific? What's going on with 22nd that? Amendment. Limits the presidency to two terms, responding to Franklin D. Roosevelt's four-term presidency by establishing a formal restriction to prevent indefinite re-election and ensure periodic leadership renewal. Damn, they said he's too OP. They're like, damn, this Franklin guy, he's so strong. He's so strong, he's so good. We have to stop him. We have, we have to do, guys, we have to do an amendment. Franklin is too powerful. Imagine being the guy that makes an amendment like this. You're so goaded. I, I don't know if he was actually goaded as, as a president. I would assume that he was not bad because he was elected four times. But you're, you're so goaded at getting elected. The people are just like, all right, come on. We need to do something about this. We need to, we need to make some rules for this. We've right? we got to make some rules for this. 23rd Amendment grants residents of Washington, D.C. the right to vote in presidential elections. What, they didn't have the right to vote before? Addressing the lack of representation for the district's residents and moving towards greater democratic participation. Do they have Santa Isia? They don't have Santa Isia, do they? It's funny because this area has more people than a lot than some states, but also no senators, so no voice. It's not very democratic. 24th Amendment prohibits poll taxes in federal elections, eliminating a barrier to voting for low-income individuals and advancing civil rights by ensuring that the right to vote cannot be conditioned on economic status. What is a poll tax? A poll tax is a tax of a, a, tax of a fixed sum on every liable individual without reference to income or resources. Wait, so it's a tax that you have to pay even if you don't make any money? That seems like a, it seems like it wouldn't make any sense. If you don't have any money, then what are you going to pay with? Would you just go to prison? But you can still vote even if you don't. Yeah, yeah that, that poll tax is dumb. Who came up with that idea? 25th Amendment. Clarifies presidential succession and procedures for addressing presidential disability, ensuring continuity and stability of the executive branch by providing clear guidelines for transferring power in cases of incapacity. Oh, dude, both of the people running for president this year are like 7,000 years old. I think this is when the, <laughs> this one's going to be a pretty important one, maybe. 26th Amendment lowers the voting age from 21 to 18, recognizing the maturity and citizenship responsibilities of younger adults, particularly in light of military service and expanding democratic participation. It is funny that they were like, hey, you can go and die in wars. But you can't vote. Also, it's kind of the same for like drinking. The the drinking age in the UK is 18, which I mean, I don't, you can make your own arguments on, hey, maybe you shouldn't be drinking at 18. It's probably a bad idea. There's, I think it's funny. It's like, you can't drink, but you can get shot at. That's totally fine. 27th Amendment. 
delays congressional pay changes from taking effect until after the next election, ensuring that legislators cannot immediately benefit from their own decisions regarding salary adjustments, promoting oh, accountability and yeah. fairness. Yeah, and then all that makes sense. <laughs> Can you imagine just immediately giving your own self a raise? You're like, I think that we should be paid more. Does, does everyone here agree that all of us should get paid more? Yes? All right, we get paid more now. That's sick. Let's go, baby. Shout out to these guys who are... Now, that was good. That was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, it's, it's, a funny, uh, it's a funny thing. It's uh, From the outside looking in, it's definitely a funny, funny thing. But you should definitely subscribe to the Paint Explainer because they have a ton of fantastic videos, like every market and trick explained, every stock market term explained, every paradox, and it's all the stuff that you can watch right now if you go to their channel, which is linked in the description. If you want to see more of my dumb face, then you can always subscribe here as well.